Yeah. Who? Team Okay. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Ours is a real wrestler, though. Theirs is a fake 70 year old. <laughs> Don't tell Mr. Laurinaitis I said that, though. <laughs> we could have brought the animal in here. <laughs> we'll open it up for questions. Uh, second row left, Ari. Luke, I, I know that you're, uh, we were at Malik Harrison's announcement today, and I know that that was your guy. And uh, you. Our were, guy. Yeah. Uh, He's part of the Ohio State University football you program. Were his recruiter <laughs> I recruit that area, yes. Yeah. Um, what was it about him that made you feel like you was a fit? I know there were some comparisons of like what you did for Darren a few years ago and getting him an offer, and, and why did you feel the, the need to get no, him? No, Malik deserved an offer, and I think the the unique thing about um, him is he probably I probably know more about him than I know about anybody else in this class. And sometimes, obviously, the guys you're closest they're closest here, and the guys in the state of Ohio you know more about. Um, and that's, that's, that's a positive and a negative at times, too, because um, there are different, uh, there's different things that those guys that are locally, you know, the different challenges for them. Um, so he, he's a kid that, man, I mean, his ceiling, his, his ceiling is who knows where. And the reality is we bring him in here as an athlete. Uh, he could walk in tomorrow and, and try a wide out, or try a tight end, try a defensive end, try a linebacker. Um, what he is, he's an explosive athlete with some length uh, and a good, really good character kid that, uh, we're going to, I think, really enjoy to have a part of this program. There's somebody that, you, you know, because based on area that you find, hey, I, this guy deserves an Ohio State offer. He needs to be here. How much leeway, how much trust does Urban have in you to say, hey, if, if Luke says we should take this guy or we should offer him, I mean, what's the process like in a situation like that? I don't. I think that, that we trust all these guys. I mean, I'm sure Coach has a, you know, obviously the longer he's known people, he'll, he'll you know, their track record may, so to speak, but they wouldn't be here if he didn't trust them. And ultimately in recruiting, yeah, it does come down to a lot of that. If guys fighting for guys and what they truly believe and, and uh, knowing what can be successful in this culture and, and in this environment. And uh, he's one of those kids I believe can truly, truly not just survive here, but thrive here uh, in the culture and the environment that we have. First row uh, left, Doug. Uh, Luke, with some of the, the defensive linemen in this class, whether it's Jonathan Cooper or Nick Bosa or Malik Barrett or whoever, um, we know you guys have some holes on the defensive line. How realistic is it for a true freshman to come in, you know that position, to come in and try to compete for realistic playing time at that position? Uh, I, I think it's difficult at times. Um, that there's the biggest, I think, biggest difference in the high school game to the college game has got to be in those big positions, you know, whether it's a defensive lineman, uh, whether it's an offensive lineman. The good thing about defensive line as opposed to offensive line, there's not nearly as much truly to learn. Um, so it becomes more down to a little bit more of a battle. But guys that are physically developed, I would say, have the, the first and best chance to come in and be able to, uh, you know, compete at that level right away. And, you know, obviously Nick Bosa would be one of those guys that you'd say physically coming in would have an opportunity to be able to challenge uh, Malik Barrow being a guy coming off of surgery as well. Um, I, I'm not sure, you know, physically whether he could, you know, step in there tomorrow and, and battle with some of the guys. Uh, and then you'd say maybe a Jonathan Cooper. It's maybe a little bit easier on the edge where you might not be physically as dominant inside. But um, it is difficult. Um, but I, again, again, we recruit those guys with the idea that, that we think that they can come in and, and give us an opportunity to compete and, and uh, you know, buy for some playing time, especially if we're going to play eight, nine, ten guys up there. I know it seems like on, on signing day we talk about all these guys and then guys redshirt, you sort of forget about them for a while. But specifically on that defensive line, just thinking about that group, some of the guys who did redshirt we were talking about a year ago, whether it's Cornell or Alibi or whatever else, how ready are some of those guys, you think? Well, some of those guys are coming off injuries, as you spoke with, with some of those. Um, you know, those guys are coming off injuries, make it a little bit more difficult, which is why spring is so big. Um, guys like Jay Sean and some of those guys, even Draymond, who had the opportunity to, to compete a little bit more in bowl practice are going to be a little bit more prepared. Uh, bowl practice really is like another spring ball. I mean, we'll have as many practices in, in bowl as we do for all of spring. So um, <clears throat> it was great for them. It was a great opportunity for them. Um, they won't be freshmen. They won't even be sophomores. We look, like to look at it as, you know, they're basically in their second year. So uh, we're looking for big things, you know, from, from Jay Sean, from, um, from Draymond and a bunch of those guys because you know it's going to be a little bit by committee until we until we can figure out really who we can count on. Uh, front row right here, Austin. Luke, Urban just when he was talking about Big Bosa said he might have been ahead of where Joey was as a freshman. Um, a, that's probably exciting for you guys. B, maybe it could be a lot of pressure <coughs> on him. How do you how do you view it? What did you guys see for him coming in? Well, again, we think we know. Um, 
you, you're not obviously ever for sure on guys that have come in as far as what, how ready and, and more so mentally of the things that they can handle. But um, the great thing you can say about probably Nick as well as Joey is that they grew up around it. And I kind of refer back a little bit to a guy like James Laurinaitis, who obviously was not high, as highly recruited as those guys. But there was, one, there was a few things about James, just that confidence level. And I try to attest it to, to him growing up in that environment. That, it, that Obviously, his dad was a big time wrestler and in that environment of competition and, and always in them, them stressful and tough environments. And, and really, to look at it, the Bosa family, Joey, with his dad playing, uh, he had big shoes to fill and have obviously high expectations. So I don't know that it's going to be anything different for Nick. Um, Nick is a mature kid that I don't think will we'll bat an eye at, you know, coming in and whether he wears the number 97, whether he looks like Joey, whether he walks like Joey, the reality is he's Nick. He's grown up with it his whole life. He uh, went to St. Thomas Aquinas, followed his brother, and, and had a very successful career. So um, I don't think anything on the mental side or the pressure side uh, would be my guess would affect him. Ah, well, he would, maybe he'll come up with something of his own, but uh, uh, Zeke kind of stole that once Joey left that game, so Zeke kind of stole it, so maybe it's now Zeke's thing. Second row middle, Kim. Uh, Luke Urban was just in here talking about Keandre and kind of <coughs> thinks he's going to be a high-impact guy as his position coach now. Um, what did you guys like about him? And then also I assume that it probably wasn't a coincidence that he committed on the same day as, as two other guys in this class. I mean, those all those things kind of all, all come together, and, and uh, like we say, if you build it, they will come. And, and but the reality is, I mean, he was a guy that we had targeted probably after his junior year. That um, on film was a guy that was very dynamic, and, and you know, I guess maybe you'd say, you'd say the, the the Sam backer position, that the prototype of what we're looking for. You could you could kind of bottle up uh, uh, Darren Lee and say, hey, this is a hybrid type of guy. We really want an athletic guy that can blitz, that can cover space out there. And from all the recruiting and watching all the film going into even before his senior year, at the end of his junior year, he was probably the one guy that we had targeted to say, wow, that, that guy fits exactly the mold of what we want. Um, we didn't have that opportunity to start with. Maybe he was you know, committed to the local school and this, that, and the other thing and how things happen and go. But the reality is um, when we had an opportunity, when things started to, to come open, when you, all of a sudden Darren Lee was going to leave and, and did leave, um, it opened up an opportunity for us. And um, we took that opportunity, knew what we wanted, uh, and we're just fortunate enough that we had the, you know, the, the good fortunes, obviously, to, to put a lot of things together to, to get maybe one of his good buddies and, and um, do a great job at landing a great football player. Second row middle, Ryan. The uh, last year's signing day was about a month after the title, so this was the first recruiting class where you all had a full year as defending champions. Did you notice that it was any easier because of that for y'all to get into some doors or recruits are more receptive or you know, kind of put that block opens earlier. all the doors you need. I mean, I know that that that, that obviously the national championship and those things, but uh, the reality is that that um, that block O and, and the history and what it has done, and you know, not just over a short period of time, but a long period of time. Um, in my 14 years of recruiting, you know, 20 years I say of being here. Uh, you know, it, it's always going to open the doors for you. The the, the job that, that coach does and, and the way he uh, motivates us and, and the, obviously the emphasis he puts on recruiting and him doing it himself um, is what really sells. But the op the opportunity, whether we won a national title, whether we were 12 and one, whether we were you know you know 12 and 0 for for the years before that, um, the reality is that that block go that Ohio State. Uh, opens the doors for us. Now it really takes great guys to be able to go in there and, and, and get the job done. And final question from Kim here. Yeah, I want to follow up on what Tim just asked you a minute ago. Uh, did, did you have a vision of a Darren Lee type player before Darren Lee became that guy, or did he, be, did he, yes, did he become that guy? Well, no, I mean, really, we did. I, after, and I, I can go all the way back to the, to the Orange Bowl, to be honest with you. And, you know, for, for probably the, that year and the, the eight years prior to that, we had played about 70% nickel defense, 75% nickel defense. We call ourselves a 4-3, but in reality, we'd play a 4-2-5 75% of the time. And after that game, specifically knowing all the lateral plays and, and handing the ball to Sammy Watkins and blocking a little nickel, nickel back out there on the edge and the ball running over the, over the edge laterally, um, we kind of sat down and said, no, we're not going to have that again. Now, obviously, there's some things that are give and take with having a, a nickel guy out there as opposed to a linebacker. And we said, this is what we need, and this is the route that we're going to go. Now, were we fortunate? Did we know exactly what we had in Darren Lee? No. I mean, we didn't have a crystal ball, but he was the type of guy we were looking for, a guy that you could say, well, what is he? Is he a safety? Is he a linebacker? Is he, a, is he this? Is he that? No, but he's athletic enough to play in space. 
we know darn well we're going to put him out there and we're going to eliminate all lateral plays, all bubbles, and all things that are going to make sure they're going to try to force the field, 50, make us cover 53 and a third. The reality is with having that guy out there, the piece that we're looking for, that we're going to try to shrink that field and have to play one third of the field. That one in, I'll get last question. Uh, That's always the last question. Go ahead. But, but who else on this on this group right now of linebackers you've got fits that mold in your mind? Well, we walk out there tomorrow, and Chris Worley is going to be that guy. Uh, no, but that doesn't that goes without saying. We're going to find a way to get our best 11 guys out there. You're going to see Jerome Baker have an opportunity to go out there, um, and you're going to see guys that are going to come in, and Keandre Jones is going to have an opportunity to go out there. Uh, but we're going to move them around. We're going to find the guys that, that, that give us the best opportunity to be able to do those things. And all you got to do is look back to the one play. I think he was – Darren went out, one play of the Illinois game. Uh, got, got a, took a shot in the chest, and the very next play they did, they come out and they throw the bubble out there to the field because we put a, a new true freshman out there, and they were going to come challenge that thing right away. So um, believe me, we bring that up often to, to whoever is going to be able to fill that spot. And listen, we, we, like Urban said, he, he wants to play 18. That's the third of the last. Exactly. But he, he said he wants to get eight, maybe 18 of these guys, of the 25 from this group, on the field next year and stuff. Uh, do you – do you feel that urgency, but also do you see the opportunities that these guys need to fill? Well, I, I think, yes, I think we've got to have that vision because you look at a guy like Darren Lee and he goes a guy that leaves after three years and for, for one year he sat himself on the bench. Um, you know, you could go back to Sean Springs. I mean, Sean Springs was a guy who redshirted and then leaves with another year of eligibility. I mean, uh, Anthony Gonzalez was the same. I mean, there's so many of those guys that that are that are those type of athletes that you know what you got to do. You got to you got to discipline yourself to go ahead and put them out there, you know. And, and that's the most difficult thing because we play at such a high level. There's no there's no ground for for somebody to say, okay, well he's not quite good enough, so let's put him on this special team or this. Or he's just he's just growing. No no no. We expect him to be grown men, you know, act like grown men, play like grown men, and. For us, we've got to discipline ourselves to be able to put them out there and give them an opportunity to, to, to prove it.